Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. Uh, this is kind of like a special equation and uh, this is actually, this uh, has been inspired by another problem that I saw, which was on one of the math Olympiads. I believe it was from Russia. And I kind of modified the numbers a little bit and I believe we've done a similar problem before. If I can find the link, I'll share that with you as well. But these kinds of equations usually have a special trick. But before we get into the trick, I want to show you the normal brute force method for solving these, these kinds of problems. Because sometimes people complain like, what if we don't see this? Uh, how, how on earth we're going to be able to see that? You know, not everybody can see the trick right away, but the practice uh, helps. The more you practice, the more you do these kinds of problems, the easier it's going to be for you to see. So in other words, you have to have an eye for these things. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the first method, which will not be concluded, by the way, because you'll see in a little bit why. I don't conclude that. But let's go ahead and expand it. Why not, right? They gave us something in parentheses. If you expand x minus 1 squared, you're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1. If you subtract it, you know, things will be negated, and we're going to get the following. And then if we go ahead and arrange these terms a little bit, subtract 23, we're going to get a cubic equation. Well, cubic equations can be solved. We could also use what is called RRT. Are you familiar with RRT? RRT is rational root theorem. Basically, the rational root theorem says if there's a rational root of the polynomial equation, then you have to look at factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, which is 1 in this case, so you don't have to worry about it. So that's why I like monic polynomials whose leading coefficients are 1, because we only have to focus on factors of 24. And negative doesn't really matter, because we're going to check everything. 24 has quite a few factors, because it can be written as 2 to the third power times 3 to the first, which tells us that there's going to be 4 times 2 times 2 positive and negative integer factors, and that's going to give you 16 factors in total. Good luck with that, right? You're basically going to have to check, and if you're lucky, you're going to get it maybe first, second, third trial, whatever. But yes, that's a method, um, and obviously you can automate this. You can use a computer, you can use from Alpha, so on and so forth. We're going to use another method, but RRT is one. Uh, you could also use as, I don't know, first, second, whatever method you want to call it, we could use the cubic formula as well. And the cubic formula, how does it work? We've done quite a few examples, but let's go ahead and talk about this briefly before I start diving into the special method. I'm going to save it for last, second method, because that is the funnest method in my opinion. But, caveat, uh, second method does not work for all problems. That's why it's kind of special. You look at the coefficient of x squared, which is usually b, and you divide it by the opposite of that number by 3, if it's monic, of course. So what's the opposite of the coefficient of x squared, which is negative 1, negate it 1, 1 third. Okay, so here's what you need to do. You must replace x with something like y plus 1 third, because that's going to help you get rid of x squared. So you're going to get a cubic uh, which is, mm, what is it called, depressed, reduced, whatever. I forgot the term, but there's a term for that. Uh, so you're going to make this term vanish. So if you do that replacement, y plus one-third cubed minus y plus one-third squared, I'm replacing x with that, plus two times y plus one-third. It's a little painful, but hey, you can do it. And then if you expand it, let me give you the result, end result, to keep a long story short. If you simplify this, and if I didn't make any mistakes, by the way, I made a mistake in one of the videos I realized. Thank you for the comments. I'm going to redo that video because that was a really good problem. It was a hard problem. So I'm going to redo it and hopefully post it as soon as I can. Anyways, that's just a disclaimer. Um, okay, that doesn't make sense. This is a polynomial. Come on yq plus 5 over 3y minus, and I don't think you're going to like this number, 632 divided by 27 equals 0. Oh, come on. Who wants to solve this cubic, even though it doesn't have a y squared term? Okay, the process is fairly painful. Hopefully, you know the idea. 
we can write this as a plus b cubed minus 3a plus b minus a cubed plus b cubed equals 0. And then set the y equal to this. This is y. This is the coefficient of y, so on and so forth. But guess what? Oh, I forgot something, by the way. It was too, writing too fast. I forgot the AB term because we got to need, we need something there, right? If this is y. Okay, so this is y. The coefficient of y is negative 3AB, which is equal to that. A cubed plus B cubed is equal to that. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to be crazy. So forget about it. Let's talk about the second method real quick because it's fun. All right. So then first of all, I'm going to tell you why this method works. <laughs> And the reason for that is because we want it to work. That's why how this problem was designed. And I can tell you how I designed it real quick after solving the problem because I don't want to spoil the surprise. So here's what we're going to do. We have a cube and a square on the left hand side. So it's kind of like a, the difference of a cube and a square. It's not like the difference of two cubes or difference of two squares. So can I get the same pattern on the right hand side using 23? So it's kind of like a puzzle. Can you write 23 as a difference of a cube and a square? Make sense? We make a list of the cubes, make a list of the squares. Hopefully you're going to realize that it can be done, right? It can be done with 27 and 4. There you go. I mean, I already knew this, but if you didn't make a list, like I said, test it out. It's not going to take too long to get to 23, if it exists, of course. Now, what does this mean? This means, can I make a one-to-one -one correspondence to make it work like this? Remember, some of the problems that we solved, like x to the power ln x, blah, 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 we do the same thing. But those are exponential and logarithmic or whatever. These are polynomial, and absolutely, we can do the same thing. So, if x cubed equals 27 and x minus 1 squared equals 4 makes sense to you, then we're good. This means x equals 3. This means x equals 3 or x equals negative 1, right? I don't care about negative 1. x equals 3 works for me, so I'll take it. Make sense? Yay. This works. So let's go ahead and do the following. Crisscross applesauce. We're going to put the 27 on the left-hand side and the square on the right-hand side. So like this. x cubed minus 27. And then put the x minus 1 squared on the right hand side and subtract the 4 from it. And guess what you have? You have two wonderful expressions. Difference of two cubes, difference of two squares. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? What do you think? Let me know. Anyways, let's factor it. Without further ado, I can't write threes these days. Like, I'm rushing. Okay, slow down. Take a deep breath. All right. Then this will be difference of two squares. Factor it. Know the formula. Super duper important. Hyper important. This is x minus 3. And this is... Okay, great. Great arithmetic or algebra skills, right? Okay, okay. Sorry about that, guys. I remember it's x plus 1. Yes. So now we have x minus 3 as a common factor. Put the thing on the left-hand side. And uses a common factor. So I have this. Notice that x minus 3 I can take out and then I'll have x squared plus 3x plus 9 minus x minus 1. Notice that we have to negate these, right? Okay, uh, did I say that I was going to show you a graph at the end? Hopefully I do have it. I think I made a graph. Okay, this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, everything is equal to 0. Great. From here, I already knew that x equals 3 is a good solution, right? And you can test it out if you want. What about the second part? Uh-oh, that's not good. Or maybe that's good. Those are not getting me real solutions. So x squared plus 2x equals negative 8. Add 1 to both sides. Complete the square because it's fun. This gives you x plus 1 squared equals negative 7. Negative 7 can be written as root 7i squared because if you square, you get that. And square rooting gives us x plus 1 equals plus minus root 7i. Finally, subtract 1 or add negative 1. You'll get the complex non-real solutions. All right? There are three solutions because we have a cubic. If you use the cubic formula, which would be crazy, you could probably find the same answer. Make sense? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Hopefully I made it. Yes, I did. Great. Awesome. This brings us to the end of this video. Oh, one, one thing I forgot to mention before we get to the end of the video. 
Why is this function always increasing? Or is it always increasing? Maybe it's curving and then intersecting the x-axis. Who knows, right? I'm trying to be sneaky. Okay, here's the thing. If this is why, let's differentiate the function. We're going to get 3x squared. Oh, no, that's not how you write it. 3x three. Three squared minus, how do you differentiate this? Bring the 2, bring the power down, and like this. Set it equal to 0. You're going to get 3x squared minus 2x plus 2 for y prime but guess what this can't equal 0 because the discriminant is less than 0 therefore this is always positive this is a parabola the derivative not the function itself is a parabola above the x-axis no roots therefore the function is always always increasing because y prime is always positive make sense and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.